I want to challenge for just a second this idea of a dedicated device for AAC. So oftentimes in the initial stages of AAC, we are recommending a device solely dedicated for communication. The child's not able to access anything else, whether that's not having anything else on that iPad or locking them into their speech generating app with guided access. While these can be helpful strategies, we can't think about this as a blanket recommendation indefinitely for the students that we're working with. Kids who use AAC eventually become adults who use AAC, and adults who use AAC are navigating in and out of their AAC systems, and they usually have more than one, and they're also using their device for multiple purposes beyond just communicating. So what does this look like in the work that we do as SLPs? I think it's important to have these conversations with families and to not take kind of the easy road, which is we just put guided access on and we remove everything from the device and we call it a day. It's really important to start teaching kids. There's certain times that we need to use, you know, our speech generating app to communicate something. And there's also times where we need to leave that app and go search for something on a web browser, for example, or send a text message. So, I just wanted to share this because I think we need to start thinking through the lens of supporting kids as they continue to develop and shifting things that we might have started doing in the initial stages of AAC that we don't need to do as a student continues to grow. So hopefully this is helpful. Mm -hmm.